What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And in this Monday, in the second week of Lent, we continue with our Lenten devotion through the Gospel of Mark. We have a reading from the Church Fathers, and we're going to continue our catechesis, this time beginning with the Apostles' Creed. Stick around. <music> So this is the second week of Lent, and we're continuing through our Lenten devotion from the Treasury of Daily Prayer. We've been reading through the Gospel of Mark. Today we're picking up uh, in chapter 6. I would encourage you to go back and read uh, some of the portions that may have been missed, as I'm only doing this Monday through Friday. Uh, but we're picking up in Mark chapter 6. And also, uh, over the weekend, we'll have gone through the, the ninth and 10th commandments about coveting. So we should definitely go back and take a look there. It's important in this Lenten season to focus on catechesis instruction into the Christian faith, and the Ten Commandments are a great place to start because it sets the tone that we fall short of these commandments, but God in Jesus Christ, the second person of the Holy Trinity, has kept these commandments for us and brought that obedience to the cross to suffer and die the death that we deserve for our disobedience so that we could become children of God. So we continue with Mark chapter 6, beginning at verse 14. King Herod, King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said that John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, he is Elijah, and others said, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oath and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot, from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Now this uh, is going to lead into the feeding of the 5,000, which is, for the people of the time, the quintessential sign that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one, like Moses, that will come and give them bread in the wilderness. So, <clears throat> what can we learn uh, in our Lenten devotion from this seeming narrative, just narrative? On Lutheran Lemonade, I said once that uh, the, the Bible is divided into two doctrines, that of law and gospel, and this is really just kind of narrative, historical narrative here, but what we learn is there is trouble for confessing the truth, and um, God sends us for a purpose. He gives us the words to say in Holy Scripture and calls us to confess those words. But he also says that he, sh he sends us out like sheep to be slaughtered. And Jesus 
um, well, what do we learn about Jesus in this? We learn that in his human nature, even as God in his human nature, he is tired, he is worn out, he wants time to rest. But when confronted with the needs of humanity, even in his human frailty and tiredness, he has compassion. And that is a wonderful message for us to discern on this Monday for the second week of Lent that our Jesus understands our human frailty and has compassion. So now we read from the catalog of testimonies, which is uh, a formal, semi-informal uh, uh, portion of the Book of Concord. Christian reader, these testimonies of the ancient teachers of the church have been provided here not to suggest that our Christian faith is founded on the authority of men, but true saving faith is not founded on any church teacher, old or new, but only and alone on God's word, as contained in the scriptures of the holy prophets and apostles, an unquestionable witness of divine truth. With his special and uncanny craft, Satan has caused fanatics to lead men from the holy scriptures, which, thank God, even a common layman can now read with benefit. To the writings of the ancient church, which are like a broad ocean, a person who has not read the fathers carefully, cannot know precisely whether or not these new teachers are quoting their words correctly, and thus they leave a person in grievous doubt. This is why we have been compelled to declare with this catalog and to show everyone that this new false doctrine has as little foundation in the ancient pure teachers of the church as in the holy scriptures. It is, in fact, dramatically opposed to it. They quote the church fathers in such a way as to give them a false meaning, contrary to the father's will. They do this just as they wantonly pervert the simple, plain, and clear words of Christ's testimonies and the pure testimonies of Holy Scriptures. Because of this, the Book of Concord directs everyone to the Holy Scriptures and the simple catechism. The person who clings to this basic form with true, simple faith proves what is best for his soul and conscience, since it is built on a firm, immovable rock. Matthew 7, 17, Galatians 1, Psalm 119. So, this is kind of, I think, the heart and core of the namesake of this Lenten devotion, Faith of Our Fathers. What the Church Fathers are, are doing when they uh, wrote and, and published the Book of Concord uh, to, to, to define clearly what it is that Lutherans believe, teach, and confess, they pointed out the errors uh, that had slipped into the Roman Catholic Church. Now, Jesus' words are true. Um, his church shall prevail, and against it the gates of hell shall not. So Christ's church does prevail. Even through the errors of the Roman Catholic Church in the Middle Ages, Christ's church prevails. Now, some, some uh, religious orders, some non-Christian denominations, and even some Christian denominations will tell you that the church was lost until insert founder here came forth. Lutherans, we don't believe that. We believe the promises of Christ that the church has always prevailed and always will. And we don't follow Luther because of the, the, the new church that was brought about when the old one passed. No, the, the church that Christ established has always been present and will always be, no matter how we muck it up. So, go to the scriptures is what the Lutheran fathers say. And when you hear someone teaching, go to the ancient church fathers and to the scriptures and to your catechism and see if they're teaching a new and foul doctrine and let the scriptures lighten what they are teaching and flee from any teaching that disagrees with that. So for our catechesis, for our instruction into this historic Christian faith, we begin with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. God has given and consistently preserves Psalm 36, 6, for me, my body, soul, and life. He gives me food and drink, clothing and support, wife and children, domestic servants, house and home, and more. Besides, he causes all created things to serve for the uses and necessities of life. These include the sun, moon, and stars, and the heaven, day and night, air, fire, water, earth, and whatever it bears and produces. They include birds and fish, beasts, grain, and all kinds of produce, Psalm 104. They also include whatever else there is for bodily and temporal good, like 
good government, peace, and security. None of us owns for himself, nor can preserve his life, nor anything that is here listed or can be listed. This is true no matter how small and unimportant a thing it might be, for all is included in the word creator. All we have, and whatever else in heaven and upon earth, is daily given, preserved, and kept by God. Therefore, it is clearly suggested and concluded that it is our duty to love, praise, and thank him for these things without ceasing. In short, we should serve him with all these things as he demands and has taught in the Ten Commandments. So those quotes come to us out of the large catechism. And uh, tomorrow, I imagine, <laughs> we'll be going into the second article. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. So... Let this bless your day, this devotion from God's word, that in this world we will have trouble for confessing the truth, but God in human flesh, Jesus Christ, is familiar with our weaknesses and has compassion on us, that we have a faithful cloud of witnesses that has gone before us, and we should flee to them and to the scriptures for pure doctrine, to protect ourselves from false teaching, and that we have a God who has created all things and created them for our good. And that we should return to the Lord what is his and use the fruits of the earth in service to him and to our neighbor. We pray. O Lord, you granted your prophet strength to resist the temptations of the devil and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your son faithfully even into suffering and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.